What's up everyone, Matt here from Native Instruments and today we're talking about 10 effects every music producer should know. Now, a lot of these may be commonly used, but with effects, it's all about how you use them. I'm gonna run through 10 different examples, toss an effect on each one, talk about some of the basic parameters and show you some cool and unique ways to use them. Let's do the thing. First up, a delay or echo. This is a time-based effect that gives you parameters to control how sound gets repeated. You can determine how long it repeats, how slow, or how fast it repeats, and more. Delay effects can be used to create a sense of depth in a mix, as well as to add texture and movement to a sound. The first example here is just a simple melody that I've played, so let's play it back and see how it sounds. So again, simple melody, but it's just kind of boring. By adding a delay effect, I'm using Replica XT, it's from Native Instruments. I have the settings set to a dotted eighth note. The mix is at 50% and it's got a 46% feedback. And by adding this on here, it's almost creating polyrhythms and it's just making your melody sound more full, more complex and gives you some really cool ideas that you might not have thought of to actually play. So let's hear it back. Again, just a really nice way to beef up your melody and make it sound a little bit more full and give it some cool changes. The next example here is putting a delay on a vocal to make it sound bigger or wider. So let's say you recorded some vocals and you really only have one good take, you don't have any doubles. Well, let's play this back and you'll see it just kind of sounds very centered. It's still moving, still doing what we gotta do. We still improving, still proving that we got no rules. So again, it just sounds kind of right in the middle and I wanna thicken it up, make it sound more wide. This is known as the Haas effect. And basically what it does is you take one of the sides and you delay it by 10, 20 milliseconds and it gives it this nice stereo feel while keeping one track. Let's play it back. It's still moving, still doing what we gotta do. We still improving, still proving that we got no rules. Really easy way to use the delay, but just makes that vocal sound very full and lush. An EQ is one of the most common tools used in music production. There are different types of EQs, such as parametric EQs, dynamic EQs, graphic EQs, and more. From mixing and mastering to shaping your sound, an EQ gives you the ability to cut or boost certain frequencies within a specific band or range. Here we have a vocal track and I'm using Neutron 4. I'm just using the EQ module, but Neutron 4 does host a ton of different dynamic modules. So let's just play the track back and you can hear what's going on with the vocals. Tell me how could we know not to be scared of it? Growing on would always be a part of it. So you could tell the vocal is just kind of low end heavy and it just needs to be cleaned up to be able to fit into a mix. So there's multiple ways to use an EQ. This way would be more for shaping your audio track and again, making it sound clean to fit within a mix. So you could see what I'm doing here. I have a few different bands. Let's just solo this one so you can hear the lows that I'm removing from the audio track. You know, that's just information that I don't need within this track because it's just gonna conflict with other things in my mix. So I'm getting rid of all that. I have a couple other bands doing some cuts here and a little boost here. So now let's play the before and after. Tell me how could we know not to be scared of it? Tell me how could we know not to be scared of it? Growing old would always be a part of it. So you can instantly hear it just sounds brighter, there's less low end on it, and it's gonna fit a lot better in my song. Now, another cool way to use an EQ is as a creative effect. So I have another instance here of Neutron. And what this one is doing is you can see it's cutting all the lows, cutting all the highs, and doing some other shaping here in the middle. And it's gonna give it a radio effect. Let's play it back. Tell me how could we know this is just a cool way to shape your sound and really lets you experiment with adjusting different bands and playing with different frequencies to get something cool 
by using a simple EQ. A compressor is used to control a signal's dynamic range or to reduce the difference in level between the loudest and quietest parts of an audio signal. Compression is commonly used to tame loud transient peaks. For instance, when a singer suddenly belts out a high note, a compressor will help maintain and keep a consistent level. This next effect is called parallel compression. What it does is it basically takes your full uncompressed signal and then a, in my personal opinion, heavily compressed signal and blends them together. So you're still getting the punch of your original signal, but you're taming those high transients from the compressed one. And again, just blending them and giving you a nice tone between the two. So let's hear what that sounds like. Here is a drum loop and this is not compressed. And then this is heavily compressed. So you can hear how it's really compressing there and keeping everything the same level. What I like to do is just pull this mix down. You can play with this number. Let's just do 50%. It's taming the high transients while keeping the punch of your tone. Let's A-B it. Just one cool way to use compression. Now let's check out another method. And with this one, I have another drum loop. This is a drum loop where the hi-hats are just extremely loud. I'm gonna play it back and you're gonna hear how loud these hi-hats are. It's almost ear piercing. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a multiband compressor and this allows you to compress certain frequencies based off a range that you have selected. Let's turn this on. These are my different bands and you can adjust the range on where they cross over. I'm just using the high band right now and compressing just these high frequencies. So let's solo this and see what it sounds like. You can see everything that's happening down here and where the compression is. So now let's unsolo it and play it back. This is without it. Instantly tames those super loud transients and keeps it together. That is a trick called multiband compression. Distortion refers to the altering or deformation of an audio signal's original waveform. The term is used to describe either intentional or undesired sonic destruction depending on the use case. Let's see a few examples of ways to use distortion as a creative effect. Two ways to use distortion here. The first one is very commonly used. It's simply putting distortion on bass or an 808. So that way things like cell phone speakers that can't produce those frequencies allow you to be able to hear that bass and make it audible. So this is a 808 without any distortion. And here it is with it. This is Dirt from Native Instruments. Super simple plugin, but I love it. It's really easy to use. I just turned up the drive a bit here, got a little saturation and frequency folding going on. Let's play it back. So you definitely hear those high notes. I'm sure if you're watching this on a phone, you can really hear the difference in how the 808 comes through. The next example here is using distortion as a creative effect. And what I'm doing, I have a track here and to transition into my chorus, I have these keys just kind of looping and it works, but I think it could be more interesting by automating the distortion to turn up throughout the transition. So here it is without distortion. And again, it works, it sounds cool. This is automating the distortion. You can see the mix knob is just turning up through this transition. Let's play that back. Oh. 
I love using distortion like this, especially automating certain parameters of the distortion on different sounds. So this is a really cool way to use it. Reverb is a time-based effect created when a sound occurs in a space, sending sound waves out in all directions. These waves reflect off surfaces in the space, decaying in amplitude until the reflections eventually die off. Music producers use reverb all the time for different reasons, like making instruments sound lush and spacey, bringing clarity and polish to vocals, and making dry rooms sound warm and natural. I have two instances of pianos here from Alicia's Keys. Let's play them back without any reverb, and then I'm gonna add them. This reverb is called Realm from Native Instruments, one of my favorite reverbs because you can do so much with it. Let's play these back. Right, so it sounds good. There's some natural reverb from the plugin itself, but now let's turn on Realm and see how I've kind of created a vibe with these reverbs. Let's play it back. You can almost hear how now it has like this movement of this motion happening and it's really pleasant. So just by adding some reverb, dialing in the settings, changing some things. This one's set to airy, this one's set to cosmic, and changing the size and the mix. You can really, really shape your sound. So the next thing I want to do here is help transition into this next part of the song. And to do that, I am going to add another instance of Realm with the mix all the way up to 100%, size 100%, a long decay, maybe we can even Go six seconds here. And I am going to bounce this final note in place. So I'm gonna make it an audio file with the reverb. So let's just bounce that and I'm gonna reverse it. And we're gonna use this to transition into our next part. So the reverb that I, just put in some fades on it. The reverb that I used to create this, I'm gonna drag it over to the track so it hangs over into the next part. Let's hear this back. Cool way to use a reverb. Just add a ton, ton of reverb to the end of a note and then bounce it, reverse it, and it really helps with those transitions. Chorusing is meant to simulate the subtle pitch and timing differences that occur when multiple musicians or vocalists play the same note, but vary slightly in pitch and timing. We can describe the sound of chorusing as a doubling effect that adds thickness, shimmer, and helps the signal sound larger than it would be on its own. Chorus is actually another effect that lives in the time-based family like delay and reverb. Here I have two vocal tracks, a lead vocal and a double. And what I wanna do with the double is give it more of a stereo effect, similar to what we did earlier with the delay. But by using a chorus on a track like this, instead of it just delaying the whole track to one other side, you can actually separate different frequencies to different sides of the stereo image. And it just gives it a little bit more of a full and ensemble effect. Again, because what it does is very, the pitch and the time at the same time. So let's play it back without the chorus on it first. I remember hip hop when it had the boom back. Hip hop and we rock it like this. I and here it is with the chorus. I remember hip hop when it had the boom back. Hip hop and we rock it like this. And if you're listening on a pair of headphones or stereo speakers, you're really going to hear the difference. What I'm using for my chorus, it's called Choral. It's from Native Instruments, very simple, easy to use chorus with a lot of different options. Another cool way to use a chorus is on an acoustic guitar. And this is a very common way to use it because what it does is it reduces a lot of those harsh frequencies from let's say the picks strumming on the strings. And it just makes the guitar sound a little bit more well balanced and overall just cleaner and more full. So let's hear the before and after. And here's with the chorus. You can see this animation here of the movement that's happening throughout the frequency range, and it just makes it sound more full, 
good effect just to toss on and really beef up your tone. Similar to a chorus, a phaser is an effect that modulates frequencies but without using time delay. Instead, a phaser duplicates the original signal and allows you to phase shift it, which changes the phase relationship among various frequencies of the copied and original sounds. This results in a sweeping, trippy kind of robotic sound. For this example, I'm using an organ. Let's just play back the chords. It's a great sounding organ, but I want to give it some movement. So I'm using Faces from Native Instruments, another really easy to use effect plugin. And you can see by the animation here, it's a slow moving phaser. So it's just going to slowly move those frequencies around on the left and right side because I have the rate right here set pretty, pretty low. So let's hear what that sounds like. So really cool way to give your sound some movement. I'm going to add an additional layer of faces on top with a very fast modulation. You can see the animation happening. Let's see what that sounds like. So now you're getting two different layers of phasing happening, and it's just a really great way to give your sound some character. The next example is on hi-hats. This is commonly used in a lot of hip hop tracks. You add a phaser to your hi-hats with a set modulation rate, and what it does is it takes certain frequencies of those hi-hats and moves them to the left and right side. Not only does this help a static centered hi-hat, sound more full, but it also just gives your track a little bit more movement. So let's hear what that sounds like without it. And here it is with it. I have the rate set over one bar. So you can really hear how it just fills in those hi-hats makes them move and sway a little bit, and it's just a cool way to give your track a little flavor. Formants are the natural resonant tones produced by a vocal track that gives character to a voice. Formant shifting sounds similar to pitch shifting, but the principles behind the two effects are different. Formenting affects vocal color, whereas pitch shifting changes the notes. In this example, we're gonna use formant, and to do that, I'm using Nectar 3, which can contain multiple different modules, but for this example, I'm just using pitch. Down here, this is your formant section. And what I am doing is I have a track with a vocal. At the end of the vocal phrase, it has a quarter note delay on it. And what I'm doing is putting the formant on the delay. So as it delays, it slowly lowers the formant. Let's see what it sounds like without any formant on it. And now the plugin is on. Let's see what it sounds like as it changes formant with the delay. Just a really cool way to make your delays a little bit more unique by changing the formant as it delays out. Now the other example is just by putting the formant straight on the vocal track and you could do this for let's say a post chorus if you just want to change it up a little bit. You've already heard the vocal without the formant so I'm just going to play this whole thing through. I just want Cool way just to change up the vocal a little bit, throw a formant on there and let that thing play. Next up, tremolo, an audio effect that lets you modulate the amplitude of an audio signal. It gives it basically a quivering or wavering effect. So you can see here, I'm just using the built-in Logic Pro tremolo. The rate is set to dotted eighth notes, a depth of 50%. And you can adjust how hard this actually shapes the wave that it's doing the panning with. So let's hear what it sounds like on this electric piano without any tremolo effect. And 
here it is with it. Great way to just give your chords a little bit of movement by easily panning it left and right and having this do it automatically for you. The next example is on hi-hats and I'm doing something really cool to these hi-hats. Let's play it back without any tremolo. So it's cool, they sound good, it's a cool little beat. First thing I'm doing is tremoloing the entire sound itself by eighth notes. So you're gonna start to hear a little panning left and right. So that's just one step. I've taken it a bit further and done a bit of automation with these tremolos. So I'm automating the depth knob to turn on and off for certain parts of this loop. So for instance, this part here, it does kind of a 64th note hi-hat roll. I have it set to tremolo at 16th notes back and forth just for that section. So this is what it sounds like. So you can hear how when those little hi-hat rolls come in, it moves back and forth quickly. And I've done the same thing on this roll here, but doing an eighth note. This is a cool way to use tremolo. It's just by automating certain parts of your loop or your sound and having it do a little bit of movement for just a small amount of time. Similar to an EQ, Filters allow you to eliminate or emphasize certain frequencies of a sound depending on the circuit or filter type. There are many types of filters used, such as low pass filters, high pass filters, band pass filters, and more. For number 10, I'm using an auto filter from Logic. This thing's really cool because it does a lot of crazy modulation just by adjusting different parameters within the filter. So I have a synth here. And it's already a really cool synth. But what I can do is add an auto filter and have an envelope adjust the cutoff of that filter. So to give you an idea of what the cutoff does, I'm gonna turn it down while it's playing. And just like we talked about on the EQ, it's taking a band or a pull and slowly pushing it down based off when I move this knob up or down. The envelope is controlling this based off when the attack of a sound hits. And you can watch this little light here. Every time a sound hits, this light will go off and it adjusts that cutoff. This is before. After. It's a really awesome way to make your sound super unique by using an auto filter. Another example of this is with drums. And this is a way that I like to use it. Let's say I have a drum beat here. And I have another drum beat that I really like. But when you play them together, it's a bit chaotic. What you can do is use an auto filter to only let certain sounds or thresholds of sounds come out within a track. So with the auto filter on, so you're really only hearing the percussion. So as before, after. So you still get that nice syncopation and movement happening, but without all the chaos and frequencies overlapping each other. And that's 10 effects every music producer should know. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you found something useful in the video or you wanna learn about more effects, let us know in the comments below. Check out a video we did where Datsun creates a track and Jeff from Isotope uses some of the effects we talked about to mix his production. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.